Okay guys, welcome to section 3, and in this section we're actually going to do some really cool stuff. In the first two sections we were kind of just learning some of the basics, and we're going to do a few things with bombs and explosions and particle effects, some real cool stuff in this third section here. Now that we can start to make things a little bit more complicated, you can really do some cool stuff. So, here are the five main things that we're going to be covering in the third section. We're going to cover materials, and the cool thing is that you can change materials at runtime from C++. So say I have a material and I want to turn it red with C++, I can really easily do that. And I'm going to show you how to do that. There's a technique uh, called dynamic material instances, and you can make one of those and then change properties about your material with C++. It's really cool. We're also going to talk about particle systems. Knowing how to manipulate particle systems from C++ is a really handy skill to have. And you are going to work with particle systems a lot. Whenever you want some sparks or an explosion or anything like that, we generally use a particle system for something like that. We're going to take the gun that comes with the FPS template that we have, and we're going to modify it to shoot grenades when you right mouse click. And then when you left mouse click, it's just going to shoot the standard uh, projectiles that the gun usually shoots. And we're going to achieve that by adding a new input to our game. Unreal Engine uses inputs in a pretty smart way, and it allows the user to change their inputs to whatever they like, um, but it's easy to manage for you, which is nice. And although we've already talked a little bit about macros, U property, etc., I'm going to show you how to use macros with enums and structs, because enumerations and structs are really useful. If you look at any game source code made with Unreal Engine, you're probably going to see a lot of enums and structs. For example, the Unreal Tournament source code you see a lot of enumerations in there, a lot of structs, they're very useful. And so we're going to show you how to use macros with those as well, because that is possible. So the first video in this section is adding a C++ actor. We're just going to add the motion bomb actor, because what we're going to create is a motion bomb. And the motion bomb, when you get close enough to it, it will detect that you were close to it, and then it will blow up. And it's going to have like this cool little pulsing effect. And so that will help you be able to tell if you're close enough to it or not. And that's all achieved using particle systems. So we're going to add the motion bomb actor with the uh, Unreal Editor. And then pretty much the best practice whenever you add a new actor is figure out what components you actually want the actor to have. And so we're only going to have a few components and we'll discuss those over in the editor. All right, so we're here inside of the project. I'm going to come into my C++ classes folder and then just right click, new C++ class. We're going to make an actor here. And then go ahead and call it motion bomb. And go ahead and click on create class and it will generate a new actor for us. Now for our motion bomb, I want a few different things. I want a mesh for the bomb. I want a sphere around the bomb. And when the player gets close enough to the bomb, the sphere detects that we're close to the bomb. And then we can blow the bomb up or whatever. And then I also want a particle system so that I can do that cool little pulsing effect. And that way the user knows, oh, I'm getting too close to the bomb. I should back off before it blows up or whatever. And finally, when the user gets close enough to the bomb, we'll make it explode, which would be pretty cool. So we're going to come into Visual Studio here. And we'll start adding some components to our actor. So uh, go ahead and click on motionbomb.h. And in here, I want to start adding some components. Now, um, I'm going to paste a little bit of code in here, just so you guys don't have to watch me type for so long. I'd rather spend two minutes explaining the code, rather than spending two minutes typing the code, because that doesn't help anyone. So, I'm just going to paste a couple of components in here. So what I have here is a static mesh, a bomb explosion radius, and some pulse particles. And I might actually rename this. Not a very good name. I'm going to call this Bomb Mesh instead. So these are the three components that I'm using for my motion bomb. The Bomb Mesh, the Bomb Explosion Radius, and the Pulse Particles. All of these are pretty self-explanatory. But the cool thing about this, it's exactly like the U-Box component, um, except it's perfect for what we want to do. And when you enter the sphere, we can blow the bomb up, and we'll use dynamic material instances to change the color of the bomb when you walk into it. 
I'm going to make a function called explode and this function will blow the bomb up by spawning some explosion particles and doing some stuff like that. So we're going to type void explode and that will be our explode function and we'll create that later on. We don't need to worry about that just yet. One more thing that I'm going to add is a boolean value. A boolean value can be either true or false. So I'm going to say bool b bomb is triggered. And this value is going to keep track of whether I've triggered the bomb or not. When we have triggered the bomb, the bomb's going to slowly turn red. So what we're going to do is use this value to track whether I've actually triggered the bomb or not. Now the next thing I need to do is initialize all of my different uh, components here. So we're going to come inside of the constructor and I'm going to initialize my bomb mesh by saying bomb mesh and then again I'll just I'll just paste this in just to speed things up a little bit. So by now you guys should know the create default sub object function and we're using that to create a new static mesh component for the bomb mesh. You may wish to set some other properties uh, about the mesh here. I kind of want the bomb to roll around and use physics. And to get that working, there are a couple of functions. There's set simulate physics and set enable gravity. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this code in here. So you can see we have these two functions. I need to rename this. But we have set simulate physics, which will make the bomb simulate physics. And then set enable gravity will make the bomb actually fall. So you don't have to write your own gravity or physics. Unreal takes care of all of that stuff for you, which is really nice. And then finally, we need a root component. So I'm going to use the set root component function, and that will set the root component to be the bomb mesh. Now, so far what we've been doing is if I want to set a mesh or set a particle system or set something, I've been going into my blueprint and doing it there. You can set stuff through C++. I wouldn't really recommend it because it's a little bit complicated, um, but you can do it if you want to. I'll show you how to do that. So what you use is what is called a object finder. And if I paste that in here, you can see what that looks like. So we um, use the object finder. We tell it what type of object we wish to find, and then we give it the path to our object and you can get the path by right clicking on the asset inside of the content browser and then copy the reference and then you just paste it in there. So we're actually hard coding the um, object and this is nice for some things and it's not nice for other things. For example, if I move the sphere to another folder, it won't find it anymore. So I'm going to change this back to bomb mesh here. So let's go back into the engine here, and if I go into the starter content folder and go into shapes, you can see here is the shape sphere here. So if I right click and copy the reference, you can then just paste it in here using this format. And that's another way to find um, content. And then I'm just using the set, set static mesh function here to actually set the static mesh for my static mesh component. I wouldn't recommend using the if object finder all the time, but it can be handy in certain situations where you know you're not going to be moving the asset around all the time. So I thought I'd just quickly talk about that. They do use that a little bit in AAA titles. I've seen that in Unreal Tournament, things like that. So the next thing I want to make is the bomb explosion radius. This is the radius that the player, when entered, will set the bomb off and make it begin exploding. So again, I'm going to use my create default sub object to make that. So we'll just paste that in there. We're going to use the set sphere radius function. And what this will do is set the radius of our sphere to 300 units. But you can customize this to whatever you like. It's fully up to you. I'm then going to use this function, which is called setup attachment. This will attach the bomb explosion radius component to the bomb mesh component. So whenever we're attaching something inside of the constructor, you should always use the setup attachment 
function. And so whenever I move the bomb mesh around, the bomb explosion radius will move with it. So setup attachment is actually quite useful for that. I'm then going to move the relative location of the bomb explosion radius because it's going to be a little bit off center. And so by moving it to 50 units on Z, it's now perfectly centered. That's just because the mesh is a little bit off. And now finally, I'm going to make it so that when the player enters the bomb explosion radius, the bomb actually explodes. And to do that, we do a bomb explosion radius. And then we use the on component begin overlap. You may remember this function. And we type add dynamic. Now don't worry if add dynamic isn't in the list. It fully works. You just pass in this. And now we need the function that we want to call when the player enters the bomb explosion radius. So we're going to make a function for that called on bomb trigger. And I'm just going to paste this in here. And I'll show you a trick later on for remembering the parameters here because they're really complicated, to be honest. You can't really expect everyone to just remember these, but I'm just going to paste this in here. So you can see all of the different parameters for this function. We've got overlapped component, other actor, other comp, other body index, all these different um, things here. The easiest way to remember these is if you right click on on component begin overlap and go to definition. It's going to lag for a while. And then you right click on this and go to definition. And that will show you all of the different parameters. And that way you don't have to remember all of this stuff because there's so many different parameters to remember. I don't think anyone's ever going to remember them all. So we're going to make an on bomb triggered function here. You just go quick actions and create a definition. And now I'm going to tell it to call my on bomb triggered function. So motion bomb and I believe it was on bomb triggered. And so now when the player enters the bomb explosion radius, it's going to trigger the bomb to start exploding. And inside of my on bomb triggered function, there's not really a lot that I want to do, but I'll make that and then we'll continue on in the next video. So inside of on bomb triggered, I'm just going to, first of all, I'm going to check that the player entered the uh, bomb radius, because if a arrow or a cube or a monster or something entered this bomb radius, it would set the bomb off. And in my case, I only want the player to be able to set the bomb off. So the easiest way to do that is we're going to check that other actor is not equal to the player. And to get the player, we use U gameplay statics. And then there's a function inside of there called get player character, like that. And to get the player character, we just pass in this and zero. So we're saying, if the actor that walked into it is not the player, then just leave the function. And to do that, we type return, and that will leave the function for us. And now we can say that bomb has been triggered. So you do b bomb triggered equals true. So the bomb has now been set off. We know that it's triggered. What did I call it? Uh, bomb is triggered. And then finally, I'm just going to make it call my explode function after one second of time. So call explode after one second. And we can finish off by just making this explode function. I'll just copy explode here and then just paste it in. And of course, we need the class name before the function. And there we have it. So at this point, we've pretty much laid down some of the groundwork. There's still a lot more stuff to do. We still need to initialize our particle system, things like that. But I'll get that done in the next video. Last thing I'm going to do is just set B bomb as triggered to be false by default. Now, it's already equal to false, but I like to be explicit about it and say that it is false in the constructor here. And that way we know that the bomb is not triggered by default.